Stephen Mosley. At the end of last month, I was privileged to be able to visit the West Cheshire Food Bank in my constituency, which, like all food banks, is run by a group of hard-working volunteers and supported by generous donations from across Chester. My visit to the food bank was not just an opportunity to see the, the fantastic volunteers that make it happen, it was also to hear firsthand about the reasons why people are using food banks, and the results were striking. Figures from my local food bank show that of those who have used a food bank since April this year, 59% have visited because of changes to benefits. And a growing number of people are visiting the food bank because of sanctions. Now the I will give way. I will give way briefly. The Honourable Gentleman for giving way because he's mentioning his own food bank. The food bank in my constituency, run by a joint venture with the Trussell Trust and the Blythewood Cafe, have had a six times increase this year alone, <coughs> mainly due to benefit changes. The Government will not listen to us on the benefit changes, and perhaps giving his wonderful start to his speech, he might put pressure on his own ministers, yeah. who quite frankly have been deplorable in this chamber this afternoon, to get them to see sense and make the changes so people do not starve this winter. Yeah. Yeah. I will come on to that point, but the Department for Work and Pensions is the frontline organisation that was dealing with these people, and that's why I support wholeheartedly the Government's decision to allow job centres to advertise and refer people to their local food bank. And that is why it is also such a big mistake for the last Government to ban job centres yeah, yeah. from referring people yeah, sure and to deprive was. people of the information that they needed to get time, food <laughs> at times of emergency. Let's make no mistake about it. Food banks were not created by for or because of this government. Yeah. They predate this government and predate recent welfare changes. They reflect deep long-term problems within our benefit system. Because the majority of people that need food bank assistance are those facing changes to benefits, the clear long-term solution is a more joined up benefit system. The solutions that have been put forward by the opposition in their motion today do not tackle the root cause of this problem. They are short-term sticking plasters that merely cover up the cracks in the welfare system. What is needed is a long-term solution to fix the problem once and for all. I will give way briefly. ...to him. I, I wonder whether he can help us with this puzzle. A lot was made perfectly properly by ministers when they were, took office and announced that in the future job centres would be able to refer people to food banks. However, that appears now to have changed. I've written an answer on the 4th of September from the former uh, minister saying this, Job Centre Plus does not refer people to food banks or issue vouchers. Can he help us to understand why has there been that change? But they do offer signposting and they do offer advice and they point people in the right exactly. direction. Exactly. But I, unlike the uh, members opposite, I do think that the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions knows what the problem is. And that is why he is pushing so hard for universal credit, which yeah, will transform exactly. welfare, yeah, yeah, yeah. solving many of the issues that we've heard about today that so still haunt our welfare yeah. system. As well as the long-term solution of universal credit, there are some short-term actions that we can take as well. Firstly, we need to find out more about food banks, and I would back the Trussell Trust call and the call from the member from South Sanit earlier for an inquiry into their use. We need to get a clear picture of the role and the extent of food banks, and we need to know who uses them and why. Then we can have a debate that is based upon the facts. Otherwise, this important debate will always run the risk of being hijacked by politicians hoping to score cheap political points. And that does nothing, absolutely nothing, to help those in need. The University of Warwick have produced a report for DEFRA on household food security and the provision of food aid, and I do hope that this report will be forthcoming. Secondly, I'm a passionate believer in school meals. In my constituency, I have seen the real difference that they can make for children providing a hot, nutritious meal yeah, every yeah. day. So I want to congratulate the government on introducing free school meals yeah. for infant pupils. Yeah. By opening up free school meals to all children, we can put nutrition first. And finally, 
we need to give food banks the support that they need. Too often people suggest that we should be ashamed of food banks. I actually disagree. Food banks play a key role in a caring society with dozens of people in my constituency volunteering at the Wesley Methodist Church and hundreds if not thousands of people donating food. I am proud that so many Chester residents want to help their neighbours and their local communities when they are in need. I would like to offer my heartfelt thanks to everyone who helps at West Cheshire Food Bank. They are really doing a truly fantastic job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, point of order, Mr Derek Twiggs. Mr Speaker, thank you for taking that. Is it